Hey guys, Angus here. Got another airsoft gun review for you guys today. Today we've got the video review of the G&G Armament Combat Machine Cheon 16 Blowback Airsoft AEG. Long name, but it's essentially G&G Armament's white M4A1. If you're interested in purchasing this gun, there'll be a link down below in the description to airsoftstation.com where you can buy it for about $185. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this review. White M4, is it going to be practical? Let's find out. As always, let's start off the review by going over the gun's packaging. As you can see, this is the box your gun will come in. Typical of G&G, it's dark green with a large picture of the gun on the front. On the opposite side, there's plenty of pictures, but in the end, it is just a cardboard box. If you were to open it up, this is what you should see. Everything's packaged fairly well inside a black plastic mold. Inside the box, you'll have two pieces of paperwork, the larger one being your gun manual. This is a very helpful manual full of pictures in color, so definitely don't recommend you take a look at it. And then the smaller packet there is a G&G 2012 official product catalog. Nothing important, just something cool to look at. Then you'll have a small bag of 1,000.2 gram G&G BBs, perfectly fine to use. One 450 round high capacity metal M4 magazine, and a rather long de-jamming rod. And of course, obviously, your G&G Cheon M4 itself. Now, out of the box, this is actually a pretty nice gun. I personally really do like it quite a bit. And that being said, let's go ahead and hop right into the actual review here, talking about the gun's external quality. Now, as you can tell, obviously, by the title, this is a combat machine. It's basically the same external quality, same external build as your regular combat machines, including the gas blowback one we just recently reviewed. So if you've ever handled one of those CMs, uh, this is essentially the same external build. So therefore, the majority of the gun is composed of a rather nice quality plastic. I believe it's a nylon fiber component. Uh, the majority of the pieces being constructed of that. Uh, for example, both your upper and lower receiver here are composed of that, as well as your pistol grip, your actual stock, the carrying handle, the handguard, and the orange flash header is made of a rather cheap and low quality plastic. So, as you can see, the bulk of your gun is composed of that plastic component. There are a few metal pieces, however, including your sling mounts, your outer barrel, your front sight, your rear sight, the screws holding the carry handle on, charging handle, magazine, the actual buffer tube to your stock, the delta ring, etc. Mainly the smaller pieces, but there is still some metal on this gun, so don't think you're buying an entirely plastic gun. Just the bulk of the weapon is plastic. Not necessarily a bad thing, because it really does cut down the weight of the replica. This thing weighs maybe five or six pounds, so definitely a lighter gun for maybe the younger airsofter out there who just wants to have something not too heavy. The main con of the plastic body obviously being not as durable as a metal, say you were to drop it. Now one thing else I want to comment on about the external quality is obviously the gun's white. What are you going to use a white M4 for? Well, this is the obvious choice if it's snowing outside to make a pretty cool weapon to have. Uh, another option I thought of was, say, CQB. You don't really need camo too much anyway, so might as well use a white gun in there. And also, if you just want to stand out in the field. It'd be awesome that you're playing in the desert and have a white gun. Personally, I would do it. The main con of that, to me, is the fact that this gun will show dirt. It'll show dirt all over it, meaning that it is white, so it might look a little bit ugly. you got to keep this thing clean. One last external note to point out here is the fact of some nice painted on markings located on the left side of the gun's lower receiver. Typical of the Combat Machine series, you have a G&G armament marking here, as well as the complete AEG in writing there. These are painted on in rather nice black paint that stands out obviously against the white M4. They look rather nice now, but just like those white markings we see on the regular guns, these will probably fade off over time, especially if you're using it in the cold, wet, wintry conditions of the guns, more so designed and painted for. But they look nice right now. Now, internal quality here, you have a metal version 2 gearbox, uh, obviously the standard M4 internals, long type motor, the version 2 gearbox, and G&G &G internals tend to be pretty nice. Uh, this gun does have a solid rate of fire on it, and it's also pretty accurate as far as hop-up and everything goes. You can upgrade it if it doesn't satisfy you out of the box, however. One thing to comment on about the internals takes us over to the gun's bolt charging handle area. Now, obviously, when you pull the charging handle back, you're going to reveal your gun's hop-up unit, as you'd expect with basically all your M4 AEGs. Now, the hop-up is that large green gear right there. And honestly, like on most G&G armament guns, this hop-up's rather effective, can really put the BBs downrange fairly far and also pretty darn accurately. So overall, it's a nice hop-up unit, really no feeding issues except for an occasional misfeed on full auto. The main con of the hop-up here is that if you have a big gloved hand actually using this gun in the winter, it's kind of hard to get in there and adjust it. 
One thing to note about the internals and why I came over here is the fact that this gun is blowback. It uses G&G's pneumatic blowback system, which doesn't put stress on the piston, but at the same time, the blowback's not exactly huge, not very effective. Uh, you can see it occasionally blink when you're pulling the trigger here, but it's nothing to be, you know, amazed by. Certainly no kick coming out of this electric blowback AEG. It's just kind of cool to have that on the side. The important part, though, when it comes to internals is no stress on the piston. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and move on to some of the features of the gun. And personally, when it comes to AEGs, in my opinion, there's no bigger feature on a gun than the weapon's battery space. And like all the other combat machines out there, the Chion's battery is stored inside this hollow handguard, being that there's obviously nowhere else in the weapon to hold the battery, seeing as how you don't have a full stock. Now, in order to access the battery compartment, it should be very simple. You simply pull back on the delta ring, and the bottom half of the handguard pops off. But in this case, this delta ring is put on there so tightly, it's almost very difficult to really get that bottom of the handguard off, let alone back on. As you can see, I'm struggling here. The spring is so tight, that you really have to fight to get it off. But when you do, you do reveal a fairly spacious battery compartment. The entire handguard is hollow, the one thing that might get in the way being your outer barrel, uh, as well as the Tamiya small type connector that is attached to the wires in there. So a small type battery will fit in here. I recommend a nunchuck style battery, maybe a nice 9.6 to give this gun a good rate of fire. The battery space itself is great. It's just putting the handguard back on and getting it off is the main difficulty. Being that the spring and the delta ring is so tight, it just wants to fight to really get back on there. Maybe it'll break in after a while, but out of the box. Certainly a con in my opinion because I like to be able to change my batteries in the field. That's certainly not happening with a delta ring so tight and a handguard so hard to get back on. It's not all bad, though. One feature that certainly never fails to disappoint is the Chion's stock. Now, this is your standard six-position M4LE style adjustable stock. You can go ahead and adjust it for your comfort to any of the different six positions. Uh, it's a very simple mechanism to adjust it. You've seen this a hundred times before, unless you're very new to Airsoft. Uh, all you simply do is push in the toggle switch here, and then you can extend it to any of the different positions. It can go from its shortest position shown here to the longest of the six positions shown here. In my opinion, the most comfortable position to shoot this gun, obviously being the longer position, seeing as how I have longer arms. But you can go ahead and adjust it in the middle there, or the shortest, depending on how tall and long your arms are, etc. Another nice bit about the stock is some fine serration on the back to aid in gripping on your shoulder. Now, another standard feature on the Chion M4 would be its fire slicker switch. This is your standard M4 style slicker switch, sort of, sort of the dial as I prefer to call it. It is not ambidextrous, being located only on the left side of the gun, and it features the standard three settings. Safe, when faced towards the front and on the word safe. Semi, when flipped towards the air and on the word semi. And full auto, when facing towards the shooter and on the word auto. So some nice engravings there in case you don't know what the selections are by now. Obviously something you've seen before in the airsoft world. Uh, it's a rather nice selector switch. It doesn't slide in between the settings. It's pretty easy to move. You don't really have to apply any force. Uh, after all, it's not metal on metal, metal on plastic. So you would expect it to be easy to move. And overall, nice selector switch. Another important feature to the Chion M4 would be its magazine, shown here. As stated earlier, this is a 450 round metal high capacity M4 style magazine. Metal obviously pretty nice quality there. You also have some nice engraved markings on here 5.56 millimeter by 45. On the bottom you have a G&G armament stamp looks rather nice and otherwise it works just like a standard high cap. Being wound down below by the gear, this would feed the BBs upward to the top, and obviously you'd fill the reservoir of the magazine through this trap door there. Holds a good amount, 450 rounds, certainly not realistic, but hey, this gun is not proprietary to only G&G armament magazines, like some of their guns, such as their M14. You can use whatever M4 mags you want in this gun, pretty much. Mid capacity is a work, low caps, and obviously the high caps. And they don't have to be made by G&G either. The high cap feeds rather well, except on full auto, you kind of have to constantly wind it in order to get a good stream of BBs going. Otherwise, no feeding issues as far as the magazine is concerned. And in the gun, there's little to no wobble. Now last but not least, we come to the weapon's iron sight, starting here with the rear sight of the gun. Now obviously this is built into the carry handle, it's the black metal piece located actually behind the carry handle, or to the rear of it, whichever you prefer to say. This is your standard iron sight, rear sight for an M4, uh, it is adjustable for both windage and elevation, one large gear being located on the right side of the carry handle, and the other being located just underneath the actual sight. You can turn these if you wanted to adjust it and sight it in perfectly on your gun. There are two apertures for the sight, an open hole one shown here, and a pinhole aperture that is revealed when the open hole is flipped down. You can use whichever one you'd prefer. 
Another nice thing to mention about the gun's rear sight slash carry handle is that it is removable. If you wanted to remove this, you'd simply go ahead and unscrew the two large screws located on the left side of the carry handle. And once they're unscrewed, you can remove the carry handle to reveal a standard 20 millimeter rail upon which you can go ahead and mount an optic of your choice. I really like this. You can go ahead and customize the gun a little bit. One thing to note is that just like the gas blowback combat machine, you have to fight to get that carry handle off. Now the weapon's front sight is a lot simpler than the rear sight. This is your standard triangle sight. Nothing really special about it. You do have a small sight post in between the two sides there. You can go ahead and adjust this up or down if you have a front sight post adjustment tool. It's adjustable, but really nothing special. Overall, the iron sights on this gun, rear sight and front sight combined, are pretty accurate to the weapon, but in my personal opinion, I definitely take advantage of that 20 millimeter rail and put a nice optic on. All right, and with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the final conclusion of this review here, what I have to finally say about this gun and wrap up the video. Now, this is a gun you're going to either love it or you're going to hate it. You're going to think it's incredibly stupid. Who would buy a white M4, especially you guys where it doesn't even snow or it snows once a year? This is the stupidest purchase ever. But, honestly, I have to say I really like it. It's a white M4, that's awesome. I love the unique guns, and it's an M4 that can actually be unique because it's white, and that's awesome in my opinion. So I would be one who would certainly purchase this and think it's awesome to have. Go great with my snow kit. There are a couple cons that I personally don't care for. Number one, the white body looks cool, but it's going to get dirty unless you keep it clean. And I can't say this because I haven't really skirmished with it uh, at this moment, as I only have it to review. But after a while, it might get so dirty, it might actually stain brownish or black on the body, and that would look hideous. So you guys have owned this. Certainly let me know about that. Another thing to point out with the externals, I personally think it should be a black magazine in here. I think the gray kind of messes up the whole color scheme of the weapon. Obviously, the orange tip does as well, but the magazine is certainly something you can go ahead and replace. Another one of my recommendations is to remove the carry handle, a con that it's really tight and feels like you're going to snap it when you're pulling it off. Put a nice sight up there, maybe an ACOG or something cool like that. Other cons I didn't care for besides the external appearance, the carry handle, I do not care for how tight the handguard is on there. I like to change my battery in the field. I don't like it when it's so tight on there that I can't do this when I'm under pressure, under fire. So I really hope this spring breaks in after a while and this is a lot easier to remove. The only other cons I can really think of on the weapon would be the typical high cap feeding issues. You really have to keep it winding in order to get a good stream of BBs coming out. I'd recommend some mid caps or flash mags for the AEG. And finally, something I don't really care about, some people might complain about, would be the weaker blowback. But it's what you're going to get with a pneumatic electric blowback AEG. Otherwise, I really do like the gun. It's comfortable, and it's a unique M4. After a long time me holding all the weirdly shaped guns and everything, the unique weapons, it's really nice to finally get a hold of an M4 that I actually like. This is a cool one, and I would definitely recommend it if you're looking for something that's a little bit unique. Otherwise, there are cheaper models that are regular colored, and, you know, they're obviously going to blend in a little bit better than the bright old white sticking out in the forest. So with that being said, guys, this has been Death Parade Airsoft's video of the g, &G Armament Chion Blowback Airsoft M4. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe.